Professional athletes are in many ways our culture's holy men. They give themselves over to a pursuit, endure great privation and pain to actualize themselves at it, and enjoy a relationship to perfection that we admire, reward, and love to watch, even though we have no desire to walk that road ourselves. In other words, they do it for us, sacrifice themselves for our, we imagine, redemption. David Foster Wallace. What is a day in the life of a bodybuilder really like? Since 2004, I have been attempting to strip away the hype and misinformation to reveal the gritty day-to-day -day existence of those who participate in this most demanding of sports. I have been fascinated by the extreme devotion and dedication that bodybuilders must have in order to excel. In my documentaries, I have strived to find subjects who exemplify the true nature of the sport, can articulate their thoughts about it, and are brave enough to show the world the difficulties as well as the triumphs. No one fits that bill better than Kai Green. For this video series and accompanying magazine article, a still photographer and I followed Kai through his daily routine for several days to show as much as possible what life is like, not only for the professional bodybuilder at the top of his game, but also for the beginner, the amateur, and frankly for anyone who wants to succeed in transforming their body and pushing it beyond its natural limits. In the beginning and over the years, I never spent a tremendous amount of time sorting out minutia details like sodium. Those are details that come later on. Those star moments that fill the highlight reels and you know, leave an audience in awe to watch. Those seconds are built on thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that a lot of people wouldn't think are worth adding to a highlight reel. This is a day in the life of a bodybuilder. Hey, what's your day like? It's not very interesting when you consider he's on a piece of cardio equipment for two hours a day. He spends another hour or two cooking. You know, he packs his food another two hours in commute to and from the gym. Well, damn, if you train twice a day or three, how does that start to look? A lot of times, these the day in the life of opportunities bring a lot of anxiety for me because there's a lot of this expectation a lot of times of, well, you're supposed to be this accomplished, celebrated bodybuilder, and, you know, why don't you have what Jay has? Why don't you, you know, live like Phil Heath does? Why, why you wear a hoodie all the fucking time, you know? What's that thing on your face? You know, where, 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 you know, where are you from? You know, and then in order to try to explain that, you almost end up looking like you're coming from another planet. Kai Green is unique among today's stars of bodybuilding. He rejects the usual trappings of success and prefers to live simply, still living and working in the downtrodden Brooklyn neighborhood he has known for most of his life. When Flex Magazine proposed this Day in the Life video series, Kai was adamant about not concentrating on the flash and rewards of the sport, which can be elusive and few for most, but rather on the daily existence that got him to this place. If the world only got a chance to see you on stage receiving top honors before they get a chance to see this, or you sleeping on someone's couch, just scraping pennies together so you could afford to train six hours a day, some bouncing gig, or some stripping hustle or something like that. It becomes very difficult to really understand the, the moment of triumph when it comes. In these videos, you won't be seeing any fancy sports cars or marbling chrome kitchens. No personal deep tissue masseuse or highly paid nutritionist. Instead, you will see what has been a day in the life for Kai Green for 20 years, and to a certain extent still is. And it all starts here, in a rundown dollar store on Flatbush Avenue. 
a critical tool in getting ahead in this game of preparation is Tupperware. It is critical to get up in the morning early or go to bed a little bit later at night and cook your food and pack it. A lot of bodybuilders go off track right here. So what I'm going to do today is show you this is how it's done. So you get yourself some tupperware. It doesn't have to be really flashy. Even though Kai's success has enabled him to move into a townhouse in a nicer area nearby, he instead takes us back to the apartment in the projects that he still keeps. Strewn with the remnants of the recent move and cluttered with his artwork and bodybuilding mementos, this was Kai's home base for many years as he struggled to survive. First thing I would do for years would be get up in the morning, and follow some basic disciplines that just end up becoming a habit. And as a result of becoming a habit, you end up feeling like your day isn't complete without doing these things. In the beginning and over the years, I never spent a tremendous amount of time sorting out minutia details like sodium, those are details that come later on. Is it 10 grams of protein more or 10 grams of protein less? Who cares, just get started. I can take a bag of a frozen vegetable. It can be string beans, broccoli, throw it in the microwave. As Kai expounds on the fundamentals of bodybuilding, the temperature in that cramped kitchen keeps rising and rising. By my estimate, after 20 minutes, it's at least 120 degrees in there. I, in my light t-shirt, am soon drenched in sweat, yet Kai in his hoodie and knit cap seems unfazed by the sauna. I have to ask why you're running the other burners at the same time, just to lose some water today, water weight. Because I'm not getting the water. I'm very comfortable in a very warm, very warm environment. I used to be in here doing cardio with the oven on, my sweet potatoes cooking, all the burners on the stove on, place so hot, I think the devil was sitting over there talking to you. Like, do you really want to do this cardio? Sweat just pouring. The audience would never see that. They'll see you on stage the day of the competition, though, and see you, you know, receiving top honors, and then say, I want to do that. I want to be that guy. And that's why I, I think it's so important to show this like this, because when I grew up in the, and I grew up and I looked at the magazines and I saw this stuff, I saw the, cele the celebrated athletes of the day with the big contracts. And I saw that. I saw them in these nice kitchens, you know, able to cook each meal fresh, you know, in their more comfortable, and relaxed, calm, kind of explain these things to the camera. And I grew up thinking that that, that, that picture was, was, was the picture. And I always wanted that picture. But I recognize that now, being on the other side of that, wow, you know, this is the work, though, that will produce the desired end result. It's... You know, being able to climb in the trenches now, when it's not convenient, it's not comfortable, when the kitchen isn't very beautiful yet, you know. Um, but recognizing that it's very, very important to get these meals and have them with you. Once you cook these meals and you pack them up, now when you leave the house, you have now eliminated the possibility of being stuck without your meal and having to go two, three, four, six hours before eating again. There's a certain amount of work that we really do have to take on ourselves and not expect for someone to do for you. 
the best coaches, the best supplement company like Muscle Meds, the best product you can ever have available to you will be of little resource to you if you're not able to do what work is required of you when it's time to do it. All right, yeah. sprinkle some broccoli here, three ounces there. Only takes about two or three minutes in the microwave. Your 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 just your cold vegetables, you know, they can be string beans, they can be asparagus, broccoli. I can put another four ounces of chicken breast in here. With this, I can add a half of sweet potato. Sweet potato I can have in either in the oven now baking, or I can have in my microwave for nine minutes. I can put four sweet potato in the, in the microwave. Give them nine minutes, depending on how big they are, but we don't have to get lost in minutia. Real life, real, you know, in the trenches bodybuilding means that you have to be inventive. You have to be a, a problem solver. You have to be able to troubleshoot, you know, because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to stay on, on target with your goal. Your goals, your dreams are important to you. Your mother may love you. But she doesn't care whether or not your arms are 24 inches. She's still going to love you. <laughs> well, maybe most moms. But, you know. But your dream of having your arms 20, over 20 inches is your dream. So it's up to you to cultivate that, to protect it, to nurture it. So it's your responsibility to come up with ways to find out how you can eat every two and a half hours without incident. You know, all the beginners, all the real, you know, fledgling amateurs that have grand, grand expectations of where they like to go in the sport, man, you gotta develop your tools. You gotta develop the use and awareness of your, of your instrument. You gotta develop these skills. Here, I'm not talking about focusing on how many grams of protein as much as I'm, or how many grams of carbs or how many grams what I'm or how many grams of fat what I'm focusing on here though is the development of character which comes which speaks to your ability to follow through and start to string together days of efficient action on a very basic level in order to be able to have your food with you every day all day so you are able to eat on time it keeps you and allows you to stay in an anabolic state now now you start talking about the things that scientifically can be can support cellular growth and muscle muscle repair but if you are still working without the strength of character yet without the ability to follow through then all that complex conversation about those sciences will mean very, very little, will mean nothing to you if you still are not able to get up, cook your meals, pack them, have them with you, and follow through with eating them every two and a half to three hours. And it was these tools that allowed me to turn around and be ready when the next level of my health came. When when the next mentorship that would come along and say, hey, look, wow, you know, you've got some real talent. I want to invest in you. I want to put some time in, in helping you cultivate your stuff. They didn't come because you were just walking around aimlessly looking for someone to help you. There's work you got to do on your own, and you've got to be willing to, to bust your ass and get it done. Not have the excuses about, well, I can't because um, I don't know how to cook. Or I can't because I don't, I'm not a nutritionist. I gotta, I gotta work, wait till I can save up money to pay a nutritionist. And then I'll turn pro. No, you do the things that you can do to the best of your ability. But I'm just saying this, if you got big dreams and you wanna do something really big, something that's gonna demand your best and all of that stuff, and you're expecting to work with, you know, some of the giant names in the bodybuilding industry. Hey, I got big dreams. I want to be Mr. Olympia one day. I want to compete in the Arnold Classic. You know what? I'll start and uh, I'll, I'll just go get one of them big names like George Farah or Hanny Rombot, Chad Nichols. I'll get Dave Palumbo, one of those guys to, to help me. They'll do my diet and Life will, life will be great after that. 
Charles Glass. They'll make me a champion. You got a sad thing coming. The the idea of developing yourself and gaining mastery of these skills, you know, your discipline, time management, you know. Um, those things are critical. Without those in place, even the, even the great supplement company with the great powerful supplement will be of little support to you without some basic fundamentals that are required of you to already have possession of. And that's the truth. No one should have to stand over you all day, every day. Did you eat? What time's your next meal? Hey man, are you on top of your schedule? Are you staying true to your, 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 your path? Because at the end of the day, it's just not that important to everybody else. And if it's more important to other people than it is you, then there's a large part of your better potential that will not be tapped. Now, funny thing about Tupperware, even if you get like really expensive Tupperware, one thing that I've learned is it always, give it enough time, it will always leak. Something will happen. Whether it's the heat in the bag, the jolting, your bag got bumped when you put it in the trunk of your car, the thing got tipped upside down, the homeless man kicked you and knocked all over the platform on the train. The possibility is very large that it will always open. So, um, I put my stuff in garbage bags, tie my food up in a garbage bag before putting it in um, my bag. One, it'll help you be able to save a lot of the food bags you have. Um, I don't know if you've never done this before. What happens is with a food bag, food spills in them, sometimes condensation from the inside of the bag. They'll produce mold and they fall apart. It can become very not nice in there, particularly if you're not putting your stuff in garbage bags and plastic bags and trying to reinforce them to stop the seepage because eventually stuff just does seep, even the really, really, really good Tupperware. Armed with his nutrition for the day, we head out. When I was a kid, they used to tell you how to get in the elevator, you know, when to get on the elevator and when not to get on the elevator. You know, some people you're not supposed to get on the elevator with, you know, so you need to develop a very quick, very good sense of judgment and character. Look, oh, oh, oh no, I'll wait for the next one. But I look, get in the elevator, I look across and I see the image that I've grown into, that would have been the image as a boy I would have been told not to get on the elevator with. Because now you're growing up and you're, you see these changes physically in the mirror every day.